welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to do something I've never done before, which is installing water cooling on a desktop PC. Specifically, we're going to be fitting this Gamdius Aura GL 120V2 in the i3 14100F PC I built on the channel a few months ago. So, let's go and get started. Right, here we have our Gamdius Aura GL120 V2, which is an all-in-one or AIO factory sealed CPU water cooling kit. In fact, it actually describes itself as a liquid cooler, so the coolant may be distilled water mixed with an additive such as a glycol but I can find no information on what's sealed inside this kit, and regardless, here in this video, I'm going to stick with the common parlance of talking about water cooling. And indeed, before we open this up, I thought I'd say a few words about water cooling in general. Over here, I've got a stock Intel cooler, which is pretty typical of what's included in the box with lower-end Intel or AMD CPUs. This is an air cooler with a fan mounted on top of a heatsink, which makes contact with the processor. And this is a pretty simple design with more sophisticated air coolers having a copper base that sits on the CPU with heat pipes transferring heat to metal fins that are cooled by one or more fans. In contrast, water cooling places a water block on top of the CPU through which water is circulated to remove heat. Exact arrangements vary, with custom systems sometimes including a separate pump and a separate reservoir, as well as a radiator which is usually cooled by one or more fans. Because water has a higher thermal conductivity than air, it's more efficient at removing heat. As a result, water cooling may offer better performance than air cooling, and may be quieter as radiator fans can spin more slowly than those on an air cooler. However, the downside is that custom water cooling systems can cost hundreds of pounds or dollars and can require regular maintenance. For those wanting a simpler and cheaper solution, all-in-one cooling kits, like the one we're going to fit, consist of a CPU water block with an integrated pump, together with a radiator with one or more fans. Everything is pre-sealed in the factory, with maintenance generally limited to keeping the radiator fins free of dust. However, care also needs to be taken to avoid air pockets, which is why the radiator is usually mounted in the top of the case, above the CPU, so that any air bubbles will gather there, rather than in the water block. In case you're wondering, water leaks are rare in factory sealed AIO systems but the risk of leaks can never be zero, and so it's important to handle water cooling hardware with care and to check when no liquid is escaping. With this all noted, let's return to our Gamdius kit. This cost me £39.99 on Amazon in the UK and currently sells for $47.99 on Amazon US. The product is available in black or white, this is the black version, and as we can see, it does both integrated RGB lighting. Note that this is the GL120, which includes one 120mm fan, but there are different versions of this available called the GL240 and 360, and these include larger radiators with two or three fans. But what we have here should be fine for our Intel 14100F system. So, let's bring in Stan with a knife and open it up. We'll start with the uh, shrink wrap, which should be simple to get rid of, like that, and like this, Russell Russell. As usual, I can never get in, but I think I've got in there. There we are. And we now just open up the side. Very exciting. I've never looked at water cooling before, so I'm very excited to do it in practice. And uh, here we are, there's a, there's a carton. Let's just pull that out like uh, that. Come out, come out, wherever you are. I've got it out. And uh, there we are. Thank you, Floor, for catching that. And uh, here we are, we've got a manual. I'm sure I'll read that. And then here we've got all the parts I was just talking about. This is the uh, water block with the integrated 
pump. This I'm sure is the radiator uh, with a fan on top of that, pre-attached to all the pipes. And down here we've got various mounting hardware for mounting it with uh, lots of different potential types of Intel or AMD CPU. So uh, this is all as it should be and I'll now unpack it using the magic of filmmaking. There we go and we'll now go in search of our computer. Greetings! Here we have the $500 i3-14100FPC I built on my channel a few months ago. And as you can probably see, I've removed the glass side so we can work in here. And I've also removed the other side of the case because we need to fit this back plate to hold the new water cooler in place. And we need access therefore to the back of the motherboard. And I hesitate there because as you may be able to see, we don't have complete access to the back of where the CPU is mounted through this aperture in the case, which is uh, rather sad, isn't it? So uh, anyway, we might have to deal with that in other ways, but later on, this is becoming a more complicated fitting than I anticipated. But uh, anyway, for now, let's get on with removing the old cooler. So we'll put the PC down on the desk like that. And the first thing we'll do is to unplug the CPU fan from the CPU fan header. There we go. And we now need to release the push pins that hold the cooler in place. So we'll take a screwdriver and these should just pop up like that. I think that popped, that certainly popped. Is that gonna pop? That's popped and, oh yes, I think it's all released. That was too easy, wasn't it? And uh, there we are, it's come off. We have taken out the old cooler. So the only thing left to do is to clear up the mess, or in other words, the old thermal compound left on the top of the CPU. And one way to get rid of this is to use the magic of filmmaking like this, but that's a bit of a cheat. And so what I'm actually going to do here is show you how I normally do remove old thermal compound from a CPU. And the way I tend to do it is to first of all, take a small piece of cardboard just to take off the worst of it because it makes it easier to clean off the rest if you've got rid of the bulk like that, there we go. And what we're now going to do is to take a piece of paper towel soaked in an alcohol-based solvent. This is a bit of an acetone, I think, but you could use a ethanol or something like that. Doesn't really matter what it is. Sometimes a bit of terps or something, white spirit. Be very careful not to get it over things you shouldn't get it over, like that there, but uh, that is going okay. And I normally do it once and then come back with a clean piece and do it again. Here I am back for the second pass. So that's getting nice and clean. And uh, yes, I think that's suitably cleaned up. That's all ready to have some more thermal compound put on it when we fit the new cooler. And so there we are, we've done our cleaning and we can now reward ourselves by experimenting with water cooling. Right, here we are back with our exciting new kit where I've laid out all the parts required to fit it in a 14th generation Intel system with an LGA 1700 processor, which is what we're working with in this video. But parts were included in the kit to fit the water block to any current Intel or AMD CPU. And indeed the manual is very good explaining exactly which parts you require for different processors. So what we first need to do is to take these brackets and to mount them to our water block pump combination. So I'll get on with that. They just slot in the side like that and then screw in. There we go. And I think I'll now also remove the protective film from the water blocks cold plate. There we are, a really nice piece of shiny copper. Next, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, this back plate now needs to be mounted up through the base of the motherboard. And note, to do this on an LGA 17100 socket system, you first have to click out these little blue pieces on the corner so that these holes are in the right place. So basically, this ends up under the motherboard, these threads poke through, and then they secure with these little standoffs like this from the top. There we are. And then the water block goes on top of here. And then we have these uh, thumb screws, which hopefully go on top like that. So that's how it all goes together. Although sadly, due to the bizarre design of the Gambrius Talos E3 mesh case I'm using, this is going to require the motherboard to be removed, which is an absolute pain. 
So I think I'll attend to matters off camera. And there we go, the plate is now fitted and held in place by the risers on the other side, the top side of the motherboard. We're therefore now at the point of fitting the radiator in the case using these screws. Although before we do that, I thought I'd say a few words about wiring because it'll be difficult to see once everything is in the case. And what we basically have here is coming out of the pump, we have this four pin plug, which will go to the CPU fan header. And we also have a fan header coming out of the radiator because there's a fan on the back like that. And that goes to uh, this fan header here, this four pin plug, and this will go to one of the system fan headers on the motherboard and allow this fan to be temperature controlled. And then we also have coming out of both the radiator and the pump wires for RGB lighting. There's a one here coming out of the radiator. There's a one over here coming out of the pump. And these can be plugged into RGB headers on the motherboard. Or what we can do is to link these together because there's a connector here. So we take that off there and we take the one from the fan, which is somewhere here. There it is. And we put that into there if I can get the right way around like uh, that. And the reason we can do that is because we have also coming out of the pump, we have this little switch here, and this controls the lighting via the via circuitry, presumably in, inside the pump. So that's what I'm going to do with control the lighting. So with that all hopefully clear, let's go back to the case where I'm going to remove the magnetic top mesh, which gives access to these mounting points, which we're going to use for the radiator. Talking of which, let's now bring it into play in the case. And it could mount in various positions. It could mount with the uh, water pipes on this side or that side. It could mount in different positions at the top, given that there's space for two fans. But uh, I'm going to place it here, I think. So let's just uh, put it in position and add some screws. And there we are, the radiator is now mounted in the case. Uh, screwdriver stopped making so much noise. And I did need to be very careful not to uh, damage the copper plate on the, uh, the water block. But the next thing to do is to take this thermal compound that came in the kit and to apply it to the processor. There we go, a nice little center P. And with this done, we now get to the moment of truth where we can fit our water block onto the CPU. Very carefully put it down in place, don't want to stress those pipes. And it goes down like that. And then we will take the thumb screws. This one seems to want to go in first, so we'll start with that one. Work diagonally, as is always the case, to maintain an even level pressure. Everything is going rather well, and I'll now just slowly take them down and tighten everything up. There we are, finger tight. I'll just go around also with a screwdriver. And there we are. I have fulfilled a long-term dream of fitting water cooling in a desktop PC. And if we just use the magic of filmmaking to connect the pump and fan headers, and there we are, all the wiring is now in place. The pump power supply was tricky to get in down here, the CPU fan header, but it's now in. All the wiring is in place, it's looped around to be neat. And indeed, I've even put on the back side panel. But the final thing to do is you might just about be able to see there's a logo on top of the cooler here, which I think will light up. And it's currently upside down. This can be rotated like that. That's the right way around. We'll hopefully see that when things light up. And talking of things lighting up, some people might be saying already in the comments, you've got the pipes crossing the top of the, uh, the pump, the water block, that is true. But I think this is the best position in terms of not obstructing the fans. I'm very pleased with the way everything is located. So having checked very carefully for leaks, let's replace the glass panel and prepare for some tests. Greetings. I've now got the PC up and running, as you can see. It's always a relief when a computer comes back to life after you've been working on it, isn't it? And I've been into the BIOS where I've set the CPU fan speed, which is the speed of the pump in our water-cooled system, to a constant full speed or 100% for maximum flow. And I've set the radiator fan, here the system one fan, to silent temperature control. 
As we can see, the fans in this system are all giving us lots of exciting RGB colors. And as you'll know if you saw the video in which I put this together, the case fans here are controlled by a switch on the top of the case. And we've seen already there's a switch which I've routed to the back of the case, which controls the uh, particular animations, particular colors for the uh, radiator fan and the fan on the water block. And if you're wondering, there is a setting to turn the LED lighting off. Turning to performance, before I fitted the water cooler, I did some tests, first running the machine at idle with a sound meter and an audio recorder by the PC and core temp monitoring CPU temperatures. And the sound you can now hear under my voice is what the audio recorder recorded with no post-processing applied. Clearly levels are bounding around, but I take this to be about 39 dB and a temperature of about 30. And I'll stop talking for a few seconds so you can hear how the PC sounds. Next, let's cut to the stock air cooler at load, which is clearly more noisy. And I read at about 44 dB with a CPU temperature of about 77 for three of our four cores. And once again, I'll let you have a listen. Moving on, here we have water cooling at idle, running at about 41 dB and an average temperature of about 30. So this is the same temperature we had with the stock air cooler at a slightly higher noise level. But I'll let you directly compare. So this is water cooling at idle. And this is air cooling at idle. And back to water cooling at idle. So we've no improvement at all. However, if we cut to water cooling at load, our noise level has not changed. It's still about 41 dB, with temperatures having risen to an average of about 65. So, at load, things are much quieter with water cooling compared to the stock air cooler, and about 12 degrees cooler. But again, I'll let you compare. So, this is water cooling at load. This is air cooling at load. And now back to water cooling at load. And so, at least with the setup I have here, there are benefits using water cooling compared to the stock Intel cooler at load. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the ambient temperature in all of these tests was about 27 degrees, and the load test had been running for about 20 minutes. Today, there are lots of extremely quiet, high-performance traditional CPU coolers on the market, as indeed I've demonstrated in other videos. And so today, there's absolutely no need to watercool a desktop PC. But it's something I've always wanted to experiment with, and I've found it very exciting trying it out in this video. And I hope that you've enjoyed coming along for the ride. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.